or prudence. A customer rush to withdraw funds from UK mortgage lender Northern Rock highlights fears that a major market bubble is about to burst. Today, Northern Rock said those fears have receded as tea, chocolates, and reassurances were handed out to dozens of customers still standing in line to withdraw their savings. Now, despite engaging in what some call irresponsible high-risk lending practices, the Bank of England has guaranteed all Northern Rock deposits are totally secure and backed by the BOE. So secure, in fact, that Northern Rock is promising a full refund on all penalties incurred for early withdrawal if customers reinvest their money by October 5th. So perhaps good news for the bank's concerned clients, but does it set a dangerous example? Is it acceptable for a central bank to bail out a private lender? And how much choice do central bankers really have if their overlying aim is to maintain national and global financial stability? Just a few of the questions I'll be asking our panel here tonight as we debate the stability of the banking sector. And joining me in the studio to my right, Catherine Lubachinsky, professor of economics at Paris 2 University. To my left, Max Kaiser, independent financial analyst and founder of KarmaBank.com. To my right, again, Craig Kapitas, senior correspondent from Bloomberg News. And joining us via satellite from London, Jan Rundolph, head of sovereign risk at Global Insights. Thanks all so much for joining us tonight. Let me start in Jan London. Jan, is it acceptable for a central bank to, to bail out a private lender, as we saw in the case of Northern Rock? Well, it depends. Uh, there's obviously moral hazard involved. We don't want uh, central banks to encourage you know, bad behavior uh, in the financial markets. But in this case, we had a liquidity crisis. Uh, Northern Rock was a casualty uh, along a series of casualties that we've seen over the last few weeks. We've seen two German banks, one French bank, but it started. The epicenter was uh, in the U.S., and all this is connected. Um, this bank this faced a liquidity crisis. It literally ran, ran short of cash because it couldn't sell its asset-backed commercial paper to the investment banking community that weren't touching anything that smelt like the securities that went bad, bad in the U.S. But the problem for the authorities uh, was that you know, a, small, a bank like this that ran short of cash but was still solvent um, you know, could create a panic and you know, banking crises are quite infectious and contagious mm -hmm. uh, and that could, could have threatened stability. So the Bank of England had to come in with a, a liquidity lifeline, uh, basically money in the back door as savers were taking it out the front door uh, in order to keep the bank afloat. Uh, okay. And now behind the scenes they're probably organizing a rescue. Okay. Max? Well, I think uh, what people are starting to realize is that the banks uh, are exposed to hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars worth of bad paper, and it's a little bit more than just a liquidity crisis. Uh, the banks themselves are not lending to each other. The overnight rate, interbank rate, is uh, quite high. Uh, there's a freezing up, a seizure in the credit markets. Uh, these assets are being forced to be marked to uh, market as opposed to mark to model. And what they find, as I said on your show last time, is that they're not holding 100 cents on the dollar. They're holding zero cents on the dollar. So this is a catastrophe. This is a controlled demolition of the banking system. This is the banking system's 9-11, if you will. This is a controlled demolition of the global banking system, floor by floor by mm. floor. Mm. And we're going to see uh, an absolute banking catastrophe, and that's my best case scenario. Okay, Catherine, is it that severe? No, no, maybe I'm too optimistic, but I'll... Uh, why am, am I optimistic? I think it's the first crisis in the securitization process. Because of the international prudential regulation, banks have put off balance sheet the, the loans that they give to people, and they've been selling assets and that's where the problem comes from. They have not been managing the risk as they should. I think the banks, it's the bank's fault. If I can jump in for right. a second, uh, these aren't assets. Uh, they're merely reducing their loan reserve requirements. So these banks are being hollowed out. Uh, they used to have 10 cents on the dollar before the depression. Uh, five, 10 years ago, it was a penny on the dollar. Now it's less than a tenth of a penny on the dollar. These are a mirage of banks. This is a hologram. These banks borrow money, lend money, and there is no asset. In America, or they're going to borrow against houses, uh, the house market is collapsing. Even Alan Greenspan, who engineered the collapse, said in his book that just came out, that real estate's about to crap, uh, crap out, excuse me, I was going to say collapse, uh, in double digits. Uh, now, the loan portfolio okay. against that. Catherine, go ahead. No, no, people still have to live somewhere and buy some houses. Yes, there <laughs> might rent. be. What? 
They can rent. They can rent, but if you rent, someone has to buy. You have to rent from someone who has bought the house. So the U.S. government has stepped in in a socialist policy. The U.S. government is effectively, in the U.K. government, as of Alistair Darling's statement, they've gone socialist. They've nationalized the banks. It's not even a capitalist but country anymore. But they've done that in 1981 with Continental Illinois, and then they privatized it again. Print. The print. central bank has to come in and save the banks if there is a systemic risk at stake. I mean, the, it's the role, it's the lender of last resort. Now, You know who's going to come is, in and say the central banks? Well, may, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm <laughs> excited. I'm very excited. You said we should be a debate. Yes, absolutely. But the absolutely. central banks, ultimately, you know, the lender of last resort is, are the resource-rich countries. Qatar, who's buying gold. I said buy gold. I've been saying that for two years through Al Jazeera, my shows on Al Jazeera English, for two years now. Buy gold. That's what they're buying. That's the lender of last resort. Qatar. China, Japan, that's the sovereign wealth funds, that's who's running the show, not the Federal Reserve Bank, not the Bank of England, they are okay. minor players. And Catherine, finish, please, Max. Gonna uh, well, I'll time. come back to that later. <laughs> Go ahead, Catherine. <laughs> well, I, I'm just surprised we're just so pessimistic and you exaggerate so much the facts. Now, for instance, if you take Northern Rock Bank, uh, their problem is they have mismanaged the liquidity risk, <laughs> not the credit risk. They have mismanaged. The subprime crisis is a credit risk crisis. The this subprime crisis is a fraud crisis. No, Banking it's a, fraud. It's Banks not, sold worthless no. paper. You'd there's no value to this you paper. To, okay, you have Max, to be, like Catherine finish? No, you have to be reasonable if you want to be convincing. What's happening is banks want to have return on equity of 20%, which is not possible given the growth uh, of the world economy. Moody Services, who rates bonds, they said publicly within the last two weeks that these bonds, these collateralized debt obligations, according to Moody's, which they advise the industry, are worth zero cents on the dollar. That these are not my words. I'm not exaggerating. I'm pulling directly no, out of talking, Moody's. We're not talking and about ninja bonds where you lend if you have no income, no job, or no asset. No, no. This, this is marginal. Subprimes are marginal. And you're talking about the major international banks, and they have only a little bit of subprime products in their uh, balance sheet. But this is how a Ponzi scheme works. As new money comes in with these no. so-called subprime, when you have trailer trash in Arkansas <laughs> borrowing money to buy a, a piece of real estate on the middle of a junkyard, and Goldman Sachs and other banks are collateralizing no. that. Oh, no, no, no. no, 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 no let, let's get Craig into the debate. Allegedly. Okay. Allegedly. Yeah. Max, Max equal allegedly. time, equal time. Craig, allegedly. go ahead, you please. Know, <laughs> you, know, you know the old story? You're locked in a room with a rattlesnake, a polar bear, and a banker. Who are you going to shoot first? The banker, twice. Uh, you know, well, isn't this wonderful? Any of your viewers who understood, and I would suggest that very few of your viewers understood anything that was just said. They're